Thank you, Wula. Appreciate it. So let me make a, a brief remark about Mark. Um, I was fortunate to work with Mark closely when I was the chair of 341. Um, Mark was the subcommittee chair for the column, docu- uh, co- the column subcommittee, and that's when the document was developed. Um, I agree with uh, Kevin that I think Mark was very instrumental in terms of pushing that document and uh, especially bringing this uh, 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 abutment flexibility. I think when he brought up the topic initially, there was some resistance on that uh, for including that particular topic. I think the later on subcommittee, committee, all the way to tech realized how important and valuable um, that addition of the, the embankment flexibility for the column, um, column design document and uh, you know, I was pleased that it got approved. And uh, I think Mark's uh, intuition for some of these simple problem, but uh, more meaningful, came through um, in integrating that particular uh, topic area. So I was definitely fortunate to have worked with Mark. Um, you know, great, great guy. Um, contributed significantly to the 341 uh, effort in multiple ways. Um, let me share with you in the in the limited time. Um, the, the work that we have done and uh, the work that's ongoing. Um, I was pleased to see a number of you presented numerical models involving abutment. We are actually executing a project right now that will involve testing of an abutment. So it will be interesting to look at some of the models that you have presented today. Um, the work that um, I am going to share with you today is a work that was um, um, done here at Iowa State University by Xiao Cheng as part of his PhD work. Um, and um, um, along with myself, Jeremy Ashlock is a faculty member in geotechnical engineering who provided um, advice uh, as a faculty member to, to Xiao Cheng. So the, the topic involves accelerated bridge construction. Um, what I want to emphasize here is that ABC work has been uh, quite a bit used uh, around the country focus more so on the superstructure and maybe some limited amount on columns. Our focus was to take this to the next level and look at um, substructure construction. Um, the idea that we had uh, with input from Iowa Department of Transportation was to drive piles. And uh, once you complete the pile driving, within 24 hours, we wanted to get to a stage where we should be able to uh, put uh, the bridge girders, uh, these are typically precast bridge girders, um, on top of the, the, the bin cap. And that's exactly what we were targeting to, to get there. Um, one of the unique uh, piece of the structural element that we introduced is a uh, precast uh, cap, uh, which basically connect the column and the uh, piles together. And we rely on a socket connection to achieve this. Um, separate investigation was done to make sure that the socket connection behavior could be adequately quantified. I'm not going to go into the details in the interest of time, uh, but there are information available in terms of the reliable forces that can be transferred depending on the thickness of the grout as well as the, the roughness that you may have for the, the corrugation if you choose to use it. Um, so we chose to do a, a field uh, evaluation of the concept that we developed. Um, that's what I want to focus on here. Um, the field evaluation involved um, applying both lateral and, and um, vertical load to a substantial amount. Um, as I mentioned, the work was funded by um, Iowa DOT. They rely on transferring as much as 25% of axial load ratio through the column since we don't deal with seismic load significantly. But we also looked at the seismic aspects of it using the same setup. Um, so the entire system was made using ABC. Uh, we incorporated the foundation flexibility by driving piles into a virgin soil where we could ac- um, accommodate the, uh, the foundation flexibility and soil foundation structure interaction. We used um, battered piles, so that's another uniqueness here. So all four corner piles were battered. Um, and then we varied, but we went up to 25% of axial load ratio to increase and make sure the connections won't uh, prematurely fail. Um, in the process of testing, we did develop a plastic hinge in the base of the column as a seismic region would want to see. Um, and I would, I would mention some of those things moving forward. So you can see some of the details of the test structure 
uh, we did have we we built a reaction wall in the field to be able to apply the load. Um, the entire unit was built at half scale using a prototype bridge that was designed and built by Iowa DOT. Uh, so you can see some of the construction photos um, that was done in the lab to produce the precast elements. You see the constructed uh, the pile cap. Um, the, this is the roughened surface at the bottom of the column. It was built in an inverted position, and that's our reaction wall system that we uh, applied. The contractor was given a template and suggested that we want these four piles to be driven vertically and the other four to be at a certain batter, and um, it wasn't too difficult for the contractor to drive the piles. I mean, they were off by a couple of inches here and there, but our socket connections were designed to accommodate those um, uh, changes or variations. And you could see in this particular picture, uh, the battered piles were still taller than where they're supposed to be, uh, but how those piles were driven. Um, after the piles were driven, as I said, we cut, you know, cut the piles, used temporary collars. So this is how we were able to get to that 24 hour time frame. We designed temporary collars to support the pile cap, the column self weight. Um, and you can see the, the, the battered piles, obviously, is not going to be in the center of the, the corrugated pipe, but that was not an issue. This was uh, designed to uh, be able to establish the, the expected connection. Um, so we use a grouted connection between the column and the cap, and we use self-consolidating concrete um, in between the, the pile and the, and the pile cap. Uh, you can see the columns is being placed. Uh, here's a completed test unit. Um, the piles were exposed because we wanted to be able to attach instrumentation some, and take some data, and that's how it was done. Uh, a series of tests was done. Uh, the phase one was what the Iowa DOT requirement was, basically 25% of the axial load ratio, 5% um, of the lateral load, um, axial load as the lateral load at the maximum. Phase two, we kind of looked at the seismic performance where we applied 10% axial load ratio with the uh, plus minus 7.5 inches to force uh, plastic inch in the column. Phase three onwards basically tested the foundation um, and the pile to foundation connections. Um, this is just a, a quick video. I'll show you a minute or so worth of the test. Um, the first phase didn't cause any damage to the system, no crack developed. Phase two is where the plastic inch was uh, formed and you could see um, there, was any, there wasn't any issue in terms of forming the plastic hinge at the base of the column. Um, all of the connections remain elastic. Um, obviously the pile cap, the piles moved laterally. We were able to capture the, the amount of flexibility that came from the uh, piles and, the, uh, and the, the rotation of the pile cap. Um, eventually after the pile cap was for uh, the pile, sorry, the column formed the plastic inch. We repair the plastic inch region, as you can see here, and then move the actuator down to the, the, the repair region. And from that point onwards, we actually tested the, the pile to pile cap um, connection. And eventually the pile cap was moved as much as um, seven to nine inches, I think in one direction, we did run out of uh, actuator stroke. Um, so that was the, the reason to have this um, unsymmetric displacement. Um, so these connections, uh, so there are a number of things that we've done that you know, confirm, for example, we use steel edge piles as a pile foundation. Number two, we use battered piles. Those two are not typically used in seismic regions. And um, number three, we did increase the amount of axial force to make sure the connections won't experience any premature uh, failure. Uh, we are now going to do a follow-up test where we would do most of the, the um, the details pretty similar uh, because that help us to uh, provide or collect some additional data. Um, but we will use the, the construction sequence differently with, with support coming from both uh, Caltrans and Iowa DOT. Um, this just shows the experimental evaluation for phase one and phase two, where the phase two is when the full plastic inch was developed. Um, in phase one, we, we this is the non-seismic condition where we had about 40% of the flexibility coming from foundation itself, the foundation, that means the pile cap and the piles. Uh, once a column yielded, about 10% came from the, the, the foundation. 
Uh, we did collect pretty good set of data uh, from the system. Um, we did look at the, uh, the extent of damage towards the end of the test. This is well beyond what the loads were expected. At the end, we did have some damage to the foil cap, as well as some um, buckling of the battered piles and some pull out of the, of the tension piles. Um, so this shows the different uh, force displacement characteristic of the pile, pile foundation system. Uh, the first crack developed in phase four, so the, the, basically the phase two is the maximum load that the connections would have seen. Phase four, where we are kind of pushing to the extreme limit um, when the, the crack developed. Uh, by the time we forced uh, damage, that was in phase six, where the connections were starting to have issues. On the numerical side, we did develop a model to look at um, how accurately one could characterize the behavior. The model was developed in SAP. Um, um, the soil characteristic were captured using uh, EY springs and TZ springs, basically. We look, looked at a number of recommendations, they ended up using Welch and Reese's recommendation for the, the pile, uh, sorry, the lateral springs, and the TC uh, recommendations are based on API recommendations. Um, they produced fairly satisfactory results. I must say that the um, you know, we were fortunate enough to compare the, uh, the experimental data and justify the use of the, uh, the, the appropriate factors. But uh, we felt like, you know, there are ways to improve and uh, we just didn't want to improve just by changing factors. Um, but we wanted to share with uh, everyone in terms of if you were to use some of the existing recommendation, how far you will be off. So in this system, obviously, most of the nonlinearity when the column was part of the test system came from the column itself. So it was the foundation flexibility wasn't too bad. Uh, but I think the challenges exist in terms of uh, how one would appropriately characterize uh, the soil plugging, for example, is something that we had to deal with. Um, the battered pile caused the distance to be increased as the pile depth increased. So the, the group effect factor that we used had to be modified. So so we were able to make those changes because, as I said, we had the data. Otherwise, it would have been a little more challenging to achieve what we have achieved. So I think I just wanted to conclude by saying that this, the connection system that we established for ABC was fairly successful. I think the test itself was uh, very successful in terms of doing the test outdoor, though we experienced challenges. The numerical modeling of the SFI system was satisfactory, but required appropriate factors to account for the the pile soil conditions. Um, the, all of the, the soil parameters were established based on CPT data. Um, there were one, uh, so, uh, for the top soil, we did run some triaxial tests to make sure that our CPT data interpretation is going to be adequate. So with that, I'll end here, we'll have given the interest of time.